This video will be ranking each wildcard playoff game in the 2023 season from worst to best. Now, I comprise my rankings with three components, hype around the game, overall competitiveness of the game itself, and the aftermath of the game, whether good or bad. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button if this is your kind of content, and let's go ahead and begin with number six. We have the Miami Dolphins taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Coming into this game, it was a record-breaking cold day with a minus 27 wind chill. One thing you could look forward to was Tyreek Hill's return to Kansas City, where he helped Mahomes win his very first Super Bowl. One big story coming out of Kansas City outside of Taylor Swift was the wide receiving core. Could they take care of these pass catching issues? Outside of Donna Kelsey, Brittany Mahomes, and Taylor Swift swag surfing, and Mahomes himself breaking his helmet, there was not that much entertainment, all things considered. At the end of the day, the Dolphins will go home losing 7-26. to As Miami heads back to Florida, they will be questioning if Tua will be the answer long term. And despite the win, the Chiefs receivers, that includes Travis Kelsey, continued to struggle catching the ball. At the end of the day, you already know the Dolphins will be back. You got one more year of two left before you're ready to make that huge decision. Maybe they have a better chance in 2024. As for Kansas City, it's kind of same old, same old. Patrick Mahomes is a beast in the playoffs. Yada, yada, yada. Coming in at number five, we have the Browns taking on the Texans. Rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, took the division by storm. On the other side, you had an aging Joe Flacco turning back the clock. He looked as impressive as any quarterback could in a four-week stretch, averaging over 300 yards passing per game. This game was beginning to deliver. Deliver. The Browns and the Texans were going shot for shot very early on, but up until about late in the second quarter, you saw the Texans pulling away. Unfortunately for the Browns, they could not keep up with the Texans' firepower. It doesn't help the fact that Flacco threw two costly pick sixes. The Texans rout the Browns 45 to 14. The impact felt about this game was that D'Amico Ryans and CJ Stroud were going to be contenders in the AFC. They destroyed the number one ranked defense. Oh, but you know what? They, they got two pick sixes, so it really wasn't all on the defense. Well, guess what? They often still scored 31 points. Despite the huge loss that they endured, the Browns don't have that much drama surrounding them after their loss. Flacco playing like he did against Houston honestly helps Watson in the long run. By no means am I saying it is justifying the contract. And that's not including all the injuries the Browns had before this game. The story surrounding the Texans is a little more interesting than the Chiefs, and that's why I put them a spot above. Still not that great. At the end of the day, this was a rout. Coming in at number four, we have the Steelers taking on the Bills. Come on, guys. Be honest with me. The hype around this game was if Mason Rudolph could launch the Steelers into a Super Bowl run. <laughs> Just kidding. Got him! The biggest storyline that was coming into this game was actually the weather. Many people did not really consider the Steelers a contender, despite the fact that they made the playoffs. The Steelers did end up putting up a fight, even being down just one score. But they got hot when it was just too late. The Bills would not relent, and they do end up winning with a final score of 31 to 17. The Steelers are one and done yet again. Mike Tomlin has actually not won a playoff game in seven years. He also added this interview when being questioned about his future, to which he just <laughs> walks away. On the flip side, you had the Bills, who, when they won, now confirmed locked in a rematch with the Kansas City Chiefs. We already know the magic, the fireworks, whatever you want to call it. We already know what happens when Josh Allen's Bills take on Patrick Mahomes' Chiefs. Coming in at number three, we have the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, this game had a lot of hype for all the wrong reasons. The Buccaneers, yeah, they won the division, so they get a home playoff game, but they won the putrid NFC South. The Eagles, who had been struggling mightily at this point, they were expected to bounce back against Baker Mayfield's Bucks. Speaking of the Eagles, they came into the season as hot as any team, number one in the NFC at 10 and 1 at one point. But things came crumbling down. You kept thinking eventually they'll get it going, they'll get it going, they're saving it for the playoffs. I think y'all know what happened next. The Buccaneers. 
dominated Philadelphia with a final score of 32 to 9. The Eagles looked lost on offense, especially without their all star wideout AJ Brown. They could not finish drives and were 0 and 9 on third down. Oh, but it gets better from there for Philadelphia because the defense did not look any better. Baker Mayfield torched this. Philly defense, throwing for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. The reason that this game ranks a little higher than the others was the fallout. Baker Mayfield gets to rewrite history. He gets to rewrite the narrative that he is not a good quarterback. On the other side, the meltdown for the Philadelphia Eagles is now complete. It's very unlikely that Nick Sirianni will lose his job. However, I can't say the same for the rest of his coaching staff. Jalen Hurts did not look comfortable. AJ Brown was injured, but something is going on. Something is brewing there. Somebody tweeted that AJ Brown deleted all his social media affiliation with the Philadelphia Eagles. Not sure what is happening, but things are not looking good in Philadelphia. Coming in at number two, we have the Packers versus the Cowboys. Mike McCarthy returns to face his old team in Green Bay. You could feel that Mike McCarthy's job was on the line. On the other side, you had Jordan Love, who had begun cementing his place as the next great Packers quarterback. In a final score that was 48 to 32, you could argue, well, this game was relatively close. But if you actually watched the game, half of their points came in garbage time. Love balled out with 272 yards and three touchdowns on just 15 completions. Aaron Jones balled out with a three touchdown performance without AJ Dillon. Dan Quinn went from a head coaching candidate to potentially fighting for his job as defensive coordinator. Mike McCarthy may be on his way out. Prescott, once again, cannot shut down the rumors of him not being clutch. Score another one for Cam Newton. But on the positive note, the impact long-term for the Packers to blow out the Dallas Cowboys, the number two seed Dallas Cowboys, the way that they did. They established love could be the next great Packers quarterback. The Packers may have just now established themselves as a contender in the NFC for years to come. But they will have a handful of teams challenging them in that regard and that's where we're getting to next the number one best game of the wild card ladies and gentlemen we have the rams taking on the detroit lions in this game matthew stafford returns to detroit the lions are looking for their first playoff win since 1992 and only their second since 1957 the current president of the united states was 15 years old at the time. And in the midst of Stafford returning to Detroit and getting booed out the building, no less, you forget this is also Jared Goff's revenge game on the other side. An intense back and forth that truly could have gone either way. At the end of the day, despite the best efforts of the Rams, the Lions come out on top winning 24 to 23. This was a Jared Goff legacy game. At the end of the day, Matthew Stafford will always be a legend in Detroit, but guess who the quarterback was that actually gave them a playoff win? That would be Jared Goff. How about Dan Campbell, you guys? Dan Campbell was laughed at, mocked at for his press conference interviews, but look at him now carrying a team that can potentially compete with the 49ers. What do you guys think? Which ones did I get wrong? Which ones did you rank higher or which ones would you rank lower? Be sure to thumbs up this video and if you could give me a subscribe. We're on the road to 1500 subs. Thank you guys so much for your support and until next time, ship boy!